Okay, sorry about that. I had to switch recordings um, because I was about to die. Um, Now for major, if it is major, um, then the only difference between um, what it could be for perfect and major is if you see once one um, semitone of space closer between the notes would make it minor before diminished but then it would be diminished doubly diminished and same thing for the right side so if this doesn't make sense hopefully it will now let me draw some notes here okay this is the treble clef and if you you see these two notes they have no accidentals on them what is the interval between them well the notes we see here are e and b so they are E and B. Well, what are the notes in between those? They are F, G, and A. Now, um, something to note, one, two, three, four. You wouldn't do something like that. That is, the space between these notes is not four because you have to count the first one. So you would just tap each one, one, two, three, four, five. The space in between them is five. Now, something to take note is key signature does matter. This is C major. But if it happened to um, be E major, then you would have some sharps here. But still, anyways, the distance between them would be five. And if we see, it is perfect. Perfect fifth, we see it's the space between them is five. Now we don't have to go left or right because there's no sharps or flats. So there you go, that's all this is. This interval is a perfect fifth. Um, now, there are symbols uh, for, for when you have something that's perfect, you just say perfect, or you could do P5. Now, um, here are the other symbols. If you had something that was major, it's a capital M, minor, lowercase m. If it's diminished, you would have a circle. If it's augmented, you'd have a plus, and P is perfect. As far as I am, as far as I know, for things that are doubly diminished or augmented, I don't know if there's a symbol for that. Usually you would just write that. Okay, so that's that one. Now there are some um, some other things to take into account. So sometimes uh, sometimes you will have uh, gaps that are bigger than eight, and if that happens, sometimes you would write it as like a ninth. So for example, if we had this. That is a gap of 9, but what you would typically do is just to subtract 7 from it, so it's really still a major 2. And how would we know this? Well, these are the notes D and E. The distance between those is 2, and that would mean it's major. And we don't have to do anything, because, again, we don't have any things that are making the gap smaller, which would be diminished, or bigger, which is augmented. Another thing to take into account is there are stable and unstable intervals. They can also be called constant and dissonant. And what does this mean? You you don't even you might already be able to tell this um, just by hearing. If you have certain notes when they're played together, they don't sound like that's the way it should be. It sounds like oh well you know it seems like that will lead to a different tone. And we are. You may have already learned about leading tones. How if you have like a if something's in G major, if you had D major chord, it would that F sharp makes you want to hear the G. The intervals that have uh, any intervals that have two or seven in them, or if they are diminished or augmented. And occasionally a perfect fourth, if the 
ba if there's the a low bass note, the um, first note is low. In these situations, it, these are unstable or dissonant intervals. All the other ones are stable or consonant. Okay, so now let's go on to some other ones. All right, what if we had this? We, we see our notes here. Now, something that you're going to notice with this is some notes are the same, remember? Things like this, they're the same, and you might just be like, that's dumb. Well, that's the way it is. And depending on a key signature, they might want to have an F flat. So if we see here, we have an F flat and a C sharp. But remember, I said we take away the accidentals. We're just going to say F and C. What are the notes in between? G, A, and B. Because this is still C major. Um, now we see the distance between these. That is happens to be 5. But before you go on and saying it's a perfect fifth, we have this time we actually do have to move around here. So what does this flat do? It makes it lower. That makes it more. So we're like, okay, now we're here, augmented. But look at that sharp. That makes it even higher. So that's what I'm talking about. Like the flat, you might think flat means diminished, but if the flat is on the low note, then that makes it... Augmented does not mean more high pitch and diminished does not mean lower pitch. They mean augmented means gap separated, diminished means gap closened or whatever you would say. So the F flat makes it lower, the C sharp makes it higher. So that is two times, so it is doubly augmented. So it is doubly augmented. Um, so we, we could just say AA5 because you don't always use, you can also say um, D or A. For those as well. So we'll just say AA5 for this. That is the interval. Okay, now what do we have? Hmm, this looks kind of weird. Well, this time we don't have um, C major. Instead, D flat major. If you don't remember, there's an easy thing that you can do to know what something's in. And technically, um, if this was the actual song, it could be the minor um, in relation to it, the relative minor, but um, we'll just say that it's major for now. But when you're determining a key if it's major for the flats, you always look to the second to last flat, and that's D flat. So we could just say this is D flat major. Um, what does that change when we're looking at the intervals, that it's in a different key. Well, all that changes is just that when we're looking at the distance between notes, we'll need to make sure that we write what notes are flat if needed so that we don't accidentally... You might think, oh, there's no accidentals. Well, there are, but let's see. Okay, so we. what are the two notes we see? We see G, we see A. The distance between them is two, but let's put on the flats because the flat they're not notated on the notes but we see it in the key so that's why we put it there but this doesn't change anything there's actually a rule if the same accidental is on both things it doesn't matter if this was C major and I and I had the flats just on these notes and I didn't have anything here still it would be the same it is still it is major second whether it was G and A, or G flat and A, A flat, or G sharp and A sharp. Because if you have the same accidental, then that means that it will be, it, it doesn't change the interval. Okay, now what? All right, well, we see B and F. Hmm, well, at least there's no accidentals. In between, we have C, D, and E. This is, there's five notes in between them. Hmm, well, something seems a little bit interesting here, doesn't it? You might think, oh, that's a perfect fit. It is not a perfect fit, though. And why is that? Well, if this is in C major, the notes in C major are 
C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So the distance between these notes, B and F, are 5. But it is not a perfect fifth because this uh, rule of writing down the notes does not work in every case because if you recall, the notes B and C and E and F are special notes because they have only a half step between them. So really, it would have to be F sharp for it to be a perfect fifth. If you play those notes on the piano, that doesn't sound that good. And that's because this is something called a tritone. A tritone um, are two notes that are six semitones or half steps apart from each other. And usually you might be able to hear that in music. doesn't sound very good and there there are the common one is F and B but there could also be G and C sharp A and D sharp uh, E and A sharp and both of these notes have the exact same space between them F and B and B and F same space between them in terms of half steps, which is six. There are 12 different possible tones. I mean, if you look over here, there are 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. C is the same, so there you go. So that's what's interesting about this, this exact same between them. And so a tritone is ne never a perfect fit because it is actually the fifth or the the higher note is too low in this case because it should be F sharp um so this would make it diminished a diminished fifth or well we could just write D5 D5 now, it's important to notice that A4, that is actually, aug augmented fourth is actually the same thing. These are called enharmonic intervals. They're the same thing, and whatever number is on them, they always add to nine. That is called the rule of nine. So if you had something that was a two and something that was a seven, they could, if they added up to equal nine, they could be enharmonic intervals depending on what two notes it was. But here's what I mean. If this, instead of B and F natural, we what if we had B and E sharp? So the distance between B and E is four, but it's E sharp. So that would make it augmented fourth. And so that's what I'm talking about. These are the same note. But it's, it's, that's why there are some tricky ones like that, because you would almost be tempted to say that it was perfect fifth, but it is not. Okay, here I have another example. What two notes do we see? F and A. What note is in between those? G. The distance between these is 3. Okay. Well, now we have to figure out what, what thing goes there. Well, 3 is a major, so we already know it's not perfect. Um, so what do we have here? We have a A double flat. Double flat that decreases the space between them one time, two times. So, not minor, but diminished. So it would be D3. This is something that's important. You might think that it's double diminished 3 because there's a double flat. But it is not because if you the difference between the major and perfect intervals is that, remember, there's that minor there. You have to go through minor first to get to diminished for this one. Not for there, but yes for here. If it was somehow a triple flat, which I don't know if that's a thing, then it would be that. And if it was only a single flat, then it would be minor third. 
let's look at one last one here. What do we see? We see D, we see A. We, have, we write the notes in between. Well, we, the distance is five, and so we can say that this is a perfect interval. It, well, not without the accidentals, I mean. It would be perfect. But, and, and we know that it's not like that case with the B and the F because D and A are not a tritone to each other. So, now we look, what do we have? We have a double sharp on the A. That happens to increase it, not once, but twice. So we go once, twice, it is doubly augmented. So we could say AA5 for the interval. Let's do uh, one more thing real quick. Th this is a trick question. Ooh, now what? Well, we still know the distance between them is five. Well, what, is the, what does this do? It makes it go up, up, down, down. We see the four arrows that point away, that means the space is going to get bigger, but four times. So this is would really be quadruply augmented. Not that that's even a thing, but that's some. That's the main thing to remember. So this is the main thing that you need to remember. It could be major if it was an interval of two, three, six, or seven, and there's nothing done to it. It could be minor if it was two, three, six, and seven, but the space in between them is decreased by one half step or semitone. Not necessarily that the top note will be flat, flattened, because very well, at the same time, the top note could be sharped. For example, C sharp and E. C, D, E. This is a third but it is a minor third because the space is de decreased by one as the C sharp decreases the space between C and E. Now, perfect, that is if there is one, four, five, or eight interval. Obviously, one isn't really that common anyways because that would just be the same note. But that's if nothing's done to it. Now, augmented, it could be any of the intervals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, just if the space is increased, m mostly meaning that if the top note was sharped and the bottom note was flat, flattened. Now, diminished is the opposite. It would be if the top note was flattened and the bottom note was sharped, decreasing the space. But keep in mind, for 1, 4, 5, and 8, if it's just done one time, then that, that would mean it's diminished. But remember, for 2, 3, 6, and 7, you would have to, it would have to be two things, like in this case, because it would first be minor before it's this. So this is what I mean by that. Um, you may want, this is what I had written down. I just, instead of writing the actual words, just the letters for them. Uh, you may want to remember this. This is definitely something that will save time, but the two scenarios, depending on what's the dis distance between the notes, it could be perfect or major, but then depending on what sharps or flats it could be, it could change. So the only difference between these two things is that minor, remember? Space decreased. Well, first it's minor before it's diminished. That's not the case for perfect, but it is for the major, which two, three, six, seven. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.